Hey, it's Omega here. I'm doing some uh, wheel maintenance today. So you see, I got like a wheel I'm balancing right here that I'm gonna put on. This is a a newish wheel that I'm putting on compared to my old uh, tacoed up wheel with like hell's of weight wheel weight bearings on it. I mean wheel weights on it. Um, yeah, I don't know. These shinkos isn't balanced very well, but uh, I'm getting a very bad vibration at 70 plus miles per hour. I think it might be because of this. <laughs> or this, but um, I'll find out when I put that other wheel on, but I'm making sure that one is balanced before I put it on. Um, it was, um, I don't know, it seemed like there was too much weight in a certain place, um, so I'm rebalancing it. I, I don't know who did it, but they probably didn't do a very good job at it. And while I'm at it, while I'm at it, I got 20,000 miles on this bike, and um, and I'm gonna go uh, 20,000, 23, and I'm gonna go replace the rear wheel bearings. Actually, I'm gonna replace both of the wheel bearings, but for now, I mean, since that one has a good, a fresh, uh, newer set of uh, wheel bearings, I'm gonna go ahead and change just the the cush drive um, bearings. So it should be a. I already got the wheel off, and um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna get her done. It's uh it's filthy. You know, get a wire brush and clean off all the dirt. You know, but uh, the sprocket still looks good. It's not that bad. Um, this kind of worries me. Right here, there's a lot of up and down play here. A lot of up and down play. But this is just a spacer, though. I think. So we'll see. All right. So I think I'm gonna have to get a, like a screwdriver or something and pop this out. They said it's pretty easy. You just um, you just punch it out, basically from the other end. So we'll I see how that goes. Want to reiterate what I, what I'm doing right now is uh is what they call in the army a uh, PMCS preventative maintenance checks and services so the the important the the philosophy between behind PMCS is to inspect and you know maintain your equipment so uh, to prevent to prevent is the important part here to prevent a uh, catastrophic failure of your equipment because uh, when you're out there on the trails or or out on an adventure or something, you don't want your equipment to fail. And thus far, I haven't had any catastrophic failures yet. So, um, because of PMCS, so that's why uh, that's why we do it in the army, uh, in the military. Um, so yeah, um, like I didn't have to replace the bearing. I'm sure it would have been fine. I could have probably rode it until the bearing fell apart, you know. But uh, but like uh, but I change it now because. Because to prevent a f catastrophic failure in the future, so that was the reason I, behind replacing this. Twenty thousand miles is a lot of miles too. I think I got my money's worth out of that bearing. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's the reason I changed this. I'm, I'm changing this bearing. Here's what I got. And, and like I said, I'm gonna change the wheel bearing also. But uh, that's when I get the wheel back from the shop. The Moose Racing uh, rear wheel bearing kit. It's actually by, um, the bearings are by All Balls, very good, uh, bearing people's company. Um, yeah, so this is the parts number A251256. Alpha251256. And this is, uh, the wheel bearing and the cush drive. Um, but I'm just gonna do the cush drive. So, let me see if I can get it open. It's kind of hard to open. It was pretty tough. I had to cut the sides and just rip the top open. So, here we go. It looks like there's a seal, another seal, a bearing, another bearing, and another bearing. There's three bearings. So, I'd imagine um, one of them is for the cush drive. I would imagine it's just probably this bigger one here, and then there's a seal for the cush drive on the, this one right here. And then this is for the other side of the wheel. I think this is what I'm working with here, right here, these two guys. So, um, yeah, I've never done this before. So, I did a, I've done a front wheel, but a rear wheel is a little different. Because you got this spacer here, and it doesn't seem to want to come off. Um, it's really loose. I don't know if that's the bearing or just the spacer itself, so. We'll see. So, well, I tried whacking it, it's not I'm coming out. Um, so, I read the manual. You're supposed to take the spacer out, so that's what I'm trying to do right now. And actually, really, the only thing that holds the spacer in is the seal, I think. Because, look. There it goes. Yeah, there it goes. 
So the seal is what holds the spacer in. So I'll just remember that. It's like I that. apologize for uh, the messiness of my work area. So there we go. It's in there now. That's still not tight enough. I don't want to fuck the hub up though. Ah, damn it. Still wants to. It's gotta be a man. <laughs> All right. So it looks like there's an O-ring. Ooh, that bearing does not look very happy. Yeah, that's not a happy bearing. This is a twenty thousand mile bearing. That could be why the back of my my uh, my bike is uh, wobbling a lot. So there's a the seal. Looks like it's in good shape still, but seen better days. And here's the the bearing. This does not look good. Oh, there you go. The spacer just oh, comes right out. That's a sp spacer. You can probably use a spacer to drive it out. Um, I think I'm gonna go use my. I think I'm gonna go use my my Harbor Freight uh, press there. <laughs> I'm sure you can probably just get like a, a socket and just smash it out or. You can, I don't see why you can't use the spacer and use it. do it too. I, I, maybe I'll try the spacer first. It may be actually pretty easy. I wonder what this is. I hope that didn't come from this. So yeah, as you can see, the bearing is fucking filthy. Yuck. No bueno. Um, it's still good though. It's still good, but it's gritty. There's some play. A little bit. Maybe like a millimeter of play. I don't know if this is going to go or not. I don't know if this is a good time to change it. It still has, it really doesn't have a lot of up and down play, but in and out play it does have. So it's probably, it's definitely not brand new. So it's time to change this sucker. All right, so let's try to get it out. Okay, I'm going to try to do what I did before, just bash it out with a socket. All right, it's a little stubborn. I probably just have to whack it harder, but uh, I'm going to go use the press since I got one. All right, here's my uh, here's my bearing pushing apparatus here, or bearing removal apparatus. It's a 22 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter socket. It's not quite in the center though. That's close enough. I just made sure it's not you know wherever it's going to come out on the other end isn't blocked or anything. There it goes. Hopefully this won't fuck the the hub up. There you go. No problem. It's going, it's going. It's not going out crooked, but... Boom! There it is. Got it out. No problem. That's funny. One side is sealed and the other isn't sealed. And there it is. There's the bearing and the seal. And just look. there we go. You're getting my money's worth out of this thing. I I, I had bought this uh, this Harbor Freight. Uh, what is this? A 12, 20 ton press to work on uh, uh, AK stuff, building gun stuff, and the because you needed a press to do a lot of stuff. And then I wound up just I didn't work on the AK anymore. <laughs> But, uh, oh great, now I gotta go find out what happened to the sockets, so here's the 19, there should be another one right here. Cool. There you go, hopefully I didn't damage the hub. Looks lot, it looks fine. Um, it's built pretty clean in there. Just wipe it off with some tissues and then, uh, we'll go install the other bearing. Sweet! And we'll just do it the opposite way. We'll just put it the other way. It's pretty, it's pretty easy with the press. <laughs> But yeah, you could probably just smack it with the socket also. Um, but you just have to make sure it's in, it stays center. All right, so there we go. Let's go take a look at the bearing and seal. All right, here's the bearing and the seal. See it? It's 
still in good shape. I think I might have deformed the seal a little bit when I pulled it off. It's got some kind of goopy, whitish, yellowish grease to it. There's the bearing. It's a little gritty. Like I said, oh, it's got some in and out play. A little bit, a little bit. It's pretty gritty also, so it's probably a good idea that we change this. I don't think it's like, you know, I don't think we have to change it right now, you know, but it's a very good idea to change it now. 20,000 miles sounds good to me. Yeah, I don't know. You guys tell me, is that a, is that bad play or not? It's quite a bit, like, like a millimeter, like I said. So, I'm gonna go clean up the hub and then, uh, Press the new bearing in. Installing the hub bearings is not difficult at all because it comes right out of the wheel. Um, the wheel is the tough part because the wheel doesn't have a it doesn't have a lot of um it, it's it's big so you can't really fit it in a press. So here's the old bearing and there's the new bearing. So this one I don't know if it has a seal before but there's some kind of spring thingy here in the center. I don't know why I think a no. Oh yeah, there's a spring on the lip here, and that's what that is. Um, it's gone on this, so I don't know. It it, it fell in it fell into the the bearing here. That's what that springy thing is. But uh, as you can see, it's I mean it's double the the new bearing, the all balls bearing is double sealed. It's a double rubber seal on it, so you don't have to grease it or anything. It's already pre-greased, and um, yeah. So this one is sealed on one side with the rubber seal. Not really sure what bearing it is, but this is the stock Suzuki one. Um, this is a KML bearing, and if you want to know what the number is on the bearing, it's uh, 6205 RD. It says. So if you just wanted to get the bearing yourself and order it, um, I would still order the, the kit. You know, um, there you go. And this is the seal. Like I said, there's a little spring thing that fell off in here. And, um, yeah. So, I don't think there's a really a way to install it. You should install it any any way you feel like it. Uh, you're supposed to grease the, I think you're supposed to grease the outside of the bearing here so it slides right in. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I can understand why it only has one seal. Because, uh, because this seal is over this seal. Right, like that, right? So supposedly it's supposed to seal it, but as you can see, it didn't do a very good job. <laughs> there's a bunch, there's a bunch of dirt and grit in there, mixed with the bearing grease. So, so this will be, this is actually an upgrade. It's a double sealed, and then you still have another seal that'll go on top of it like that. Oh, so clean and pretty, right? All right, let's go install this. All right, I've got all the components cleaned as best as I could. I just basically wipe the grease off a little bit. Um, Whatever dirt was in there, I'm assuming a little bit of dirt won't hurt, but I'm going to add some grease to the inside of this where the bearing is held, and then um, and we're going to go push the bearings in. I cleaned the spacers, they're nice and clean, it wasn't too hard, and um, yeah, so let's hop to it. Before I, I put the bearing back in, here's a little trick that um, should help the bearing go in a little easier. So what I've done, if you got a freezer near you, I put the bearing in a freezer here, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna come back and be like 15 minutes or something. It'll be nice and cold, and the metal will have shrunken just a little bit, and then I'll probably get a I'll get a heat gun or something and heat the hub up, and then uh, maybe the maybe we may not even need to use the press. We'll see. We'll give it, we'll give it a try. Well, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll heat up the um, the hub with the heat gun. And then uh, for like a couple of minutes, like a minute, and then uh, and we'll see if that works. If not, we got the press. But I got the press all set up and ready. I'm like, mm, let's see if this works. The idea behind that is, uh, um, if you freeze the bearing, it'll it'll shrink. The metal will shrink, compress, and then if I heat the hub, the hub will expand. But uh, but that's like a lot of metal to expand on the hub. The hub has a lot. Of, yeah, it's a lot of meat to to expand. Um, maybe it would be better if I use a torch. I don't know, but I'm just gonna go with the heat gun right now. Maybe the freezing will be enough. 
uh, more efficient because the bearing is much smaller than the hub. The hub will probably just absorb all the heat, but, so you have probably have to get the hub pretty damn hot. So we'll go do that. Um, I'll come back in like 15 minutes. I'll Alright, here I am. I'm uh, heating the hub up. Uh, I wish I had a little uh, temperature, like a laser thermometer. It's probably something I gotta go buy. Uh, it's next on my Harbor Freight shopping list. It's one of those thermometers. But uh, for now, I'll just uh, I'll touch it, and when it's hot, it'll, it'll be hot. <laughs> It's not very hot. Yeah, I can still touch it with my hand, so it's not very hot. There's the bearing. Hopefully it'll slide right in. And uh, it slides in a little bit, and it just stops. Great. Some bitch. Yes, my plan. It failed. <laughs> Freezing the bearing and heating the hubs does not work. I would have thought it would just come right in, but it doesn't. All right, let me see if I can get it out and grease the bearing up. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just hitting it in with the hammer as far as it'll go. Actually working quite well, actually. So now the problem is I got to be able to drive it the rest of the way in there, and I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to press on the center of the race, and that's no good. Um, so uh, what they suggest is to get a punch and just start whacking around the sides. Um, we can do that. Because I, I kind of don't want to use the press because it may damage the race. Like I said, it's, it's going to press on the center of the, it's going to press on the, the center section of the bearing and that's, that might mess it up. So hmm, maybe I can put two bearings in. No, that's not. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is get a punch. I mean, I, I think it helped. I think it did help quite a bit. Helped quite a bit. So, I'm just gonna get this punch here and just whack it around the circle. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, success. Sorry, I couldn't do it with, uh, I needed two hands to do it. But basically, when you get to the top here, it's kind of hard. You just whack it a little bit and it goes down. Actually, I think, um, I think freezing the bearing did help. It, it was pretty easy to tap in there. All I did was I tapped it here, and then I moved it along, and I kept on tapping it, tapping it, tapping, tap, 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 tap. And then you'll feel it kind of bottom out. Uh, I might tap it a couple more times, but I think that's good already. And then, um, and that's it. That was, that was a piece of cake. And it's just sitting on the top of my, uh, on the top of my vise here. It's kind of moving a little bit. But, uh, yeah, and just be careful not to, like, damage the, the surface where the bearing stays. Other than that, that, that worked uh, that worked pretty damn well. So, so freezing. Um, so my suggestion is to freeze the bearing, heat the hub up as much as you can, and then it's not going to drop in there. You know, I was that's what I was, I was hoping, but it didn't. And then you got to actually um, tap it in with the hammer, uh, like going around, and then get a punch, and then tap around the outside. The best thing to do is to, if you had like a pipe or something that was the same diameter as. Um, as the bearing, you can use that to drive it in, but I didn't have any, I don't have a socket that big, you know. <laughs> I'm not really sure what a kind of a, what else you could use in lieu of that. Um, there's actual uh, Suzuki bearing driver tool, but I don't have that either. So I'm just going to go tap it a couple more times to see if it's bottomed out. I'm pretty sure it has. I can't really see anything else on the bottom. And then we put the seal in. And then the spacers. Okay, I tapped it a little more, and upon further inspection and a bright light, it is indeed, there is no more gap uh, where the bearing is. So that's the safest way to do it. You don't want to, you don't want to put as much as possible, I mean, you probably could, but you don't want to put any pressure on the center section here because that may damage the bearing. And the whole, the whole inner, the inner race section I might just go straight through, so you don't want that. You don't want that. You want this to last a long time, so that's the best way to do it. Um, yeah, so I uh, we could have used the press if I if I had something that uh, fit around the outer diameter. That would probably be the best way to do it. 
but um, I, I just do the hammer, hammer around it, and then t hit it with a punch. So now we're going to install the, the, the seal, the outer seal. Alright, so I went and greased, the, greased the, um, the outside of the seal. I know there's some grease in there too, but uh, probably the, the bearing uh, probably pushed a lot of it inside. And just put that in there. Maybe it would be a good idea to freeze it too, but uh, let's see. Oh yeah, this is this one is not going to be as easy. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. All right, there it is. So all I did was uh, yeah, I might have peened this a little bit, but uh, um, all I did was uh, hit it with the backside of the the punch from the top here, and I went around in a circle like I did before, and it slipped right in. Uh, it it's going to give um, the seal gives a lot more than the bearing, so uh, so it was pretty easy to get in there. And like I said, once it gets past this little lip here. Um, it's fine. Like you should be able to stick your fingernail down there a little bit, and you should be good. Um, that's as far as I could drive it. And then, uh, and then we're just gonna grease up our uh, spacers and then uh, put the spacers back on. All right. So I've greased the. Um, you want to make sure there's a lot of grease on this uh, this outer spacer here. It should just pop right in, I think. Hopefully. Maybe you might need to tap it with something, the hammer, to get it in there. But make sure it's got some grease on it. There you go. No problems. Very, very tight fit. It's not, it's not moving at all. Let's get it going a little bit. But yeah, you want to make sure there's a good, um, there's a, some grease on that, so it makes a seal. But uh, yeah, that that bearing is got a seal here. It's got a, it's got a seal here and then it seals here where it touches it's got an inner seal that that bearing is is uh, got some serious protection for it now and the grease the grease protects it too it keeps dirt and water from getting in there that's why they say don't pressure wash your bearings or else it you know it um the grease comes out so man that is really tight really really tight i, I don't know i don't know if that's a good idea but we'll see but uh, anyway it's going to push in there and then the whole thing is going to rotate um, so that's in there. That's not going out. And then I'm just going to flip this bad boy over. It's still warm. It's good. And then uh, I'm going to go get my uh, inner spacer here. Oh, that just drops right in there. Let's make sure it's all greased up like that. The smaller side goes in first. And just slide it in there. Boom. Done. Finito. And then uh, just put it back on your bike. And make sure the cush drive rubbers are on there and everything. Uh, you probably, I'll probably uh, re-grease my axle. I'm, I used the red grease on this before, and I I started I changed to a, a black grease because I'm trying to use it all up. That's what I'm working with right here. So the grease I use is a Valvoline Multi Lube Lithium EP grease. Um, I was using some red multi-purpose grease, uh, but um. I'm trying to use up all this black stuff because it's really old. I'm pretty sure grease, I don't know, I'm not sure if grease gets old. Also, don't forget, uh, you have, um, when you put your wheel back on, you have another spacer on the other side for the, um, for the, what's that? What's my, what's the word? Uh, the, for the rotor side, the brake rotor side. Mm, look at those brake rotors, nice and clean. Look at that. Um, yeah, I don't know. This DR eats up pads really quick on the back, and I don't use pads very. I don't use the rear brake on. I don't. I'm not one of those riders that uses the rear brake a whole lot. You can see, uh, um, I've bottomed out quite a bit. Looks <laughs> all that black stuff there looks like rubber. Yeah. So uh, it looks like I've been bottoming out a lot. Like the tire has actually been touching the fender. That's uh, that's not very good. Um, yeah. You know, I'm riding it too hard, too hard, and too much uh, too much weight on the bike. Anyway, so that's how you uh, that's how you replace the the rub uh, the cush drive uh, uh, bearing. Um, I did mine. Uh, I had twenty thousand miles on it, so uh, uh, you may want to check that out. Um, when I took it out, well, as you saw, there does not a whole lot of grease in it left, and there was a bunch of dirt inside. So uh, so yeah, depending on where you ride and you know how you ride. Um, your mileage may vary. So I got 20,000 out of mine. I would have been, I could confidently say like, 
I could have probably ridden it some more. It had about a millimeter of play on it. Um, actually, this has no play on it. Yeah, a no no play. So so a millimeter of play versus no play, right? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure this this bearing is done. It's the old one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A millimeter of play on that one. I just just I'm I'm just throwing that out. Um, I don't I'm not I didn't measure it or anything, but I'd say that's about a millimeter ish of play. Whereas this one no play it will not move at all but uh i mean of course it's brand new so uh so i think a 20,000 might have been too much i probably should have changed them at 15 yeah 15 sounds good 10,000 but like i said this is my adventure bike i ride it hard i ride it hard i load it up with a lot of weight and uh yeah so i got 20,000 i'd imagine if uh you probably rode it on the street all the time not too fast all the time uh maybe it'll last longer i don't yeah i don't know if the dirt really got in or not but uh i mean obviously it did but your mileage may vary it is a mega i wanted to point out that uh um i don't know let's see the wheel bearing the wheel bearing doesn't have a whole lot of play not really a little, maybe a little bit, but um, the um, I'm not changing the wheel bearings on this because I'm putting this wheel that has less miles on it. As it looks like in its pretty good shape already. I'll probably check the play, but um, yeah, this uh, this kit comes with the two wheel bearings and another seal for the other side. So um, so this the the kit that I bought is for the whole thing, the whole the wheel and the cush drive. So the only thing I changed was the cush drive today. So. Uh, I'll change the wheel bearing when I get this one back from getting getting it repaired. But uh, it looks fine, actually. So uh, I, don't, I don't see any reason to change it, but I'm going to change it anyways. 20,000 miles. Please, my God.